private rented sector nearly doubling in size over the past decade, a few unscrupulous landlords are exploiting the high demand and rents with less than high standards. In this report, we'll look at the impact this has on the renters and speak to the MP whose private members' bill to give renters more power against rogue landlords has now become an act of parliament. A privately rented bedsit squeezed into a tiny space of the bed, kitchen sink, fridge and bathroom. The tenant's pictures reveal the state of disrepair over the years. He pays the landlord nearly £900 a month through benefits. He wishes to remain anonymous. They're just here to make profit and that's it. They're not here to help any vulnerable people. Last Saturday I left here in an ambulance because I tried to take my life last, last week. Um, and um, I took an overdose of um, antidepressant and um, I just had uh, enough. It's about a quarter of homes in the private rented sector don't meet the decent home standard. Homes that are riddled with damp and mould, homes that are so wet on the walls that when you put your hand on them and paper comes off black and flaking. Properties that are so cold that people have had to shut off most of their properties and live in one room. Just appalling conditions. Some of those landlords are rogues. They are getting away with taking money from tenants and letting them live in squalor, letting them live in unsafe conditions. The bedsit is one of six self-contained rooms with two shared kitchens. They are crammed into what was a two-bedroom house. He claims his landlord turns up unexpected for inspections and the fire alarm has not been working properly since moving in. I don't feel safe. If you uh, put a piece of plastic through the door and you, and you bring it down uh, and you push it with, you know, put a, a bit of strength, you can open any door. We've had several leaks. The floor of one of my neighbours is completely uneven and uh, there was damage. And the landlord actually said um, he should insure his things. So, and they refused to pay um, for the, the things which had been damaged from their bad work. According to the charity Shelter, there are currently almost one million rented homes with hazards that pose a serious risk to health and safety. In March 2019, Karen Buck's private member's bill became the Homes Fitness for Human Habitation Act. Well, it means that if their home is unfit, that is, it's, it's unsafe uh, or unhealthy, that they can go to court. They can enforce against their landlord so that the landlord will put right the conditions that are causing that unfitness. And in some cases, if the landlord fails to do so, they can seek compensation. And with the number of renters on the rise, especially families, it's hoped this act will give them the protection and rights that they need to be cared for. We know that only 1% of all of these hazardous homes are actually inspected by local authorities now. So we know that tenants actually have to have a legal means of enforcing against their landlords. But for those dealing with the reality, it's not so easy to take up the fight. They don't leave any paper trail, so they don't send you letters. Then you don't have any records of it. Rent is paid from his benefits directly to the landlord. We were ob obliged to sign the papers to say that we couldn't deal with our finances. So basically, uh, giving them uh, the full power. And how does that make you feel? Abused, I think. Um, weakened and uh, taken advantage of. And it feels like um, trapped in poverty. The worst conditions are lived in by the most vulnerable people, by and large, and many of them are very frightened about taking action against their landlords. Let's be absolutely honest about that, because many of them fear eviction. So can this act really make a difference? Landlords hear now that there is a clear legal requirement on them to make sure those homes are fit and to keep them fit and to change their behaviour accordingly.